In this tutorial, we will look at some of the new features that have been added in IBM Integration Bus version 10.004. The new features include a Salesforce request node, which allows you to connect to Salesforce from a message flow and create, retrieve, update or delete Salesforce records. Enhancements to the REST API editor enable you to define a new REST API from scratch without needing an existing Swagger document. Enhancements to the graphical data mapping capability so that JSON data types can be modeled using a JSON schema or a Swagger document. The new callable flows feature first appears in IBM Integration Bus version 10.004. Callable flows allows you to easily split message flow processing between different Integration Bus locations. You can split your flows between different applications in the same integration server or between different integration servers, which can also be different integration nodes. A new callable flow draw is added to the message flow palette, which contains the three message flow primitives which are provided with this feature. A callable flow invoke node is used in the flow from which you wish to invoke another flow. The callable flow invoke node is configured with the name of the application where the flow which is to be called resides. The endpoint property identifies a specific callable flow input node which is to be invoked. The callable flow input node is used in the flow which is being invoked. The callable flow reply node is used at the end of the flow being invoked in order to return data back to the original flow. Salesforce is a leading CRM software and enterprise cloud ecosystem. By using the Salesforce request node, you can integrate your business critical applications in your organization with Salesforce. For example, you can synchronize your master list of customers, products, prices, and other business critical data with your key applications. Salesforce has many different types of objects, such as accounts, contacts, leads, and opportunities. By using IBM Integration Bus, you can develop message flows to interact with these Salesforce objects with a host of other service endpoints, such as SAP and Oracle. If you want to use the Salesforce request node, you need to purchase IBM Integration Bus as part of the Application Integration Suite bundle. This tutorial will show you how these three new features can be used together to receive message data, transform it, and send it to Salesforce. We will go through the steps to define a REST API, which allows you to create, retrieve, update, and delete a Salesforce contact. The scenario will show you how to quickly create a new REST API transform the message that is received using the graphical mapping capability and send the message to Salesforce using the Salesforce request node. In order to connect to Salesforce from IBM Integration Bus, you will need a Salesforce ID, a password for the Salesforce ID, a security token, a Salesforce connected app, a consumer key for the connected app, and a consumer secret for the connected app. The details for setting up your security credentials are described in the Knowledge Center for IBM Integration Bus. We have already set up a connected app on Salesforce. The credentials are stored and have a Salesforce security item already set for them called SF1. The security identity is used by the Salesforce request node to look up the stored credentials. Now that we have our security credentials set up, we can create a REST API which we can use to connect to Salesforce. We will start by clicking on this quick link to create a REST API. If we enter the name of the REST API, this forms part of the API base path. We can now see the graphical editor which we can use to build the REST API. We will define a new resource and call it contacts and specify a post operation 
for the contacts resource. The post operation will be used to create a contact. We will define a model that is used by the REST API operations for contacts. The model describes the data that will be sent in request and response messages. In this example, the data contains the forename, surname and area that the contact works in. The POST operation will use the model that we just defined. We can now create a subflow which contains the implementation for the operation. We will implement the POST operation which is used to create a contact. The editor has created a Swagger document which describes the operations and the model that is used by them. The schemas for all Salesforce objects are provided in IBM Integration Bus. These can be located in the Salesforce subdirectory under Sample. Since the REST API will be processing Salesforce contacts, we will import the contact JSON schema file into the REST API project. We can now use the graphical mapper to map between the Swagger document used by the REST API and the contact JSON schema. Open the graphical mapper from the mapping node. New to this fix pack is an option to map the input and output for the REST API operation. When we click finish in the mapper wizard, we can see the model described by the Swagger document as the input on the left hand side. We will change the output to the right hand side to use the model described by the contact JSON schema because this is the input we require for the Salesforce request node. The contact JSON uses different names compared to those used in the Swagger. For example, it expects a field called first name instead of forename. It's easy to map these fields using the graphical data mapper. Let's add the Salesforce request node to the message flow and configure the node properties so that a create operation is done for a contact. We will enter the URL for the Salesforce system that we want to connect to. We can choose create, retrieve, update or delete for the operation. We're going to select create. We are shown a list of Salesforce objects which can be selected. We're going to select contact. Let's specify the security identity value SF1, which is used to look up the security credentials. We can now finish by wiring up the nodes, and we can look to deploy the REST API. After deploying the REST API, we can look up the URL for the REST API definition. We can use this URL in a REST API test tool. We will use swagger.io to send requests to the REST API. We can choose the POST operation to create a new contact. If I enter forename, surname and area for the contact, after submitting, I can see a response code of 200, which indicates success. If we log into the Salesforce organization, we can see a new contact has been created. We have implemented the get, post, put and delete operations for contacts in another REST API project. We have defined operations under two resources, contacts and contacts by ID. The contacts resource has operations affecting all contacts. The contacts by ID resource has operations for a specific contact. We can create a new contact using POST and it returns an ID to us. We can use this ID to retrieve data, update 
or delete the contact. We can retrieve all of the fields by the contact by specifying the ID as a path parameter. We can retrieve all contacts by department and specify if we just want to see a summary. The summary returns only the name, department and ID of a contact. In this video, we have demonstrated the new features that have been added in IBM Integration Bus version 10.004. The Salesforce Request node allows you to interact with Salesforce through a message flow. This opens up the possibility of connecting Salesforce with many other endpoints using different transports. The REST API editor has been enhanced such that you can define a REST API from scratch without needing an existing Swagger document. The editor will generate the Swagger document for you. The graphical data mapper has been extended so that JSON data types can be modeled using a JSON schema or a Swagger document. We have shown that these features can be used together if required to access Salesforce through a REST API.